Good day, uh, my name is Michael Molondo and I'm going to present on Psychological Counseling 2 uh, for second year degree students. The purpose of this presentation is just to give you an outline on your assignment, uh, what is expected from you, and then I'm going to go through all the assignments uh, the, and the requirement. And um, for each assignment that I'm going to discuss, I'm also going to give you some explanation or some guidelines. So there are four assignments uh, that you have to submit. And I'm going to go quickly through the four assignments, and then uh, as my presentation progress, I'm going to explain uh, each assignment. Uh, the first assignment is looking at the code of ethics. Uh, there are certain principles that you have to adhere to when you are going to conduct any counseling. Now, in your assignment, it is ex expected that you have to explain the importance of code of ethics. Firstly, you're going to give us, or you're going to define what is a code of ethics. You're going to give us the list of the code of ethics and why it is very important. Thirdly, you are going to discuss the importance of ethical principles or the code of ethics when it comes to counseling. And then number four, which is very important, is you are going to explain with practical example uh, why it is important to use the code of ethics and the importance and the rele relevancy of uh, uh, code of ethics when it comes to counseling. Uh, the second assignment is uh, you are going to look at the national guidelines of uh, adolescents living with HIV AIDS. Uh, you are going to look at uh, what is the Ministry of Health is doing, especially with young people living with HIV AIDS. What is the situation in, in Namibia? And you can make a reference uh, to your study guide or your study manual uh, on this uh, subject. Uh, where are you going to outline uh, what the guideline is all about? Uh, you can also look at uh, the latest uh, guideline which the ministry is having and especially the guideline that make reference to ARV treatment. Um, so it gives you a very good uh, information and in your assignment you have to explore and then you have to outline and then you have to explain with practical details uh, when it comes to uh, young people or the adolescents living with HIV AIDS in Namibia. Then you can also look at other countries in SADC, Southern Africa. You can come up with a comparative analysis with regard to young people living with HIV AIDS in SADC and how does that compare with Namibia uh, and do they have guidelines in place and what are these guidelines and if not, what can we learn from those? Uh, what are the best practices, uh, you can also give your recommendation. And the third assignment is going to look at the at culture itself. Uh, you are, In your assignment you have to define what is culture. And then you have to define the different cultures that we have in Namibia. And how is culture linked to human development? Because culture is not just a matter of skin color. Culture is also about the practices, the norms, the different beliefs that people are having. You have a group of people that are having the same norms, the same belief, the same practice. And those norms and beliefs makes out their culture. In an organization where you have got different people with different ethnicity, they've got an organizational culture. So it's very important that in your uh, submission for your assignment, you have to bring out uh, the issue of culture. Why are culture difference? What makes a culture culture? And then how does culture develop you as a human being? How can you use culture as part of human development? And you will focus specifically in Namibia where you can look at all of this different. And then also when you are going to explore and explain uh, the culture, cultural difference, uh, you are also going to give practical example. You are going to mention a different culture and then you're going to explain how is that, is that culture linked to human development or not. When we talk about human development, what do we mean? Um, uh, 
uh, the same might be uh, uh, if you look at uh, some of, of, of the, the, the principles uh, that are being used coming to human development or even in psychology. So does that culture then, so we're going to discuss this in detail when we're going to cover the assignment. Then the fourth assignment is uh, you have to look at the psychology of sex. Um, you are going to look at uh, what role does sex play in a culture. Um, then you can identify any two culture or ethnic groups in, in Namibia. Then you have to discuss their sexual practices. Um, and then you're also going to look at the taboos. Uh, why do certain culture or certain ethnic groups have certain sexual practices? Why do they believe in those practices? And what are the taboos? Taboos actually means what are the beliefs? Um, so you can explore and you can go into detail uh, in your assignment, but it's very much expected from you that you have to give some practical examples uh, that can explain or can justify uh, your, 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 your assignment as much as possible. So those are the four assignments that's actually expected from you. So we are quickly going to go through the assignments and I'm going to start with assignment one that's looking at the code of ethics. Now, there are different ethical principles that you need to adhere to when it comes to counseling. Um, I'm not going to go in detail for the sake of, of time and for this um, presentation, presentation, but it is expected from you as a student that in your assignment, you have to identify, you have to explore, you have to explain with practical examples um, with regard to uh, code of ethics or ethical principles. So I'm quickly going to go through those different codes. Um, uh, some call it ethical principles. It's actually the same thing. Now, the first ethical code is autonomy, um, where uh, a client or the person or whoever you're going to counsel uh, is independent. They can make their own decision. They've got their own autonomy, their own right of decision making. So you cannot force your belief. You cannot force your own knowledge, your own ideas on the person. So the client itself, are having their own right to make certain decisions that will determine them. Then the second is non-maleficence, um, which we call do no harm. Uh, it's self-explanatory that it's very important that when you are going to counsel someone that you must not counsel someone to cause any harm. And harm is not just looking at bodily harm, it's also looking at emotional harm, psychological harm. Because somebody that comes in for counseling is already harmed, is already abused, is already in a psychotic state. So you must make sure as part of your principle, you must not create a bigger harm. Then we have beneficence, um, which means it's a promotion of goodwill and wellness. Uh, the, you are, it's all about the well-being of a client. So the client must know that he or she is very important. And then of course, justice. Uh, which talks about commitment, that you as a counsellor, you are committed to this client and you are going to be fair. So what, whatever you're going to discuss in your judgment, whatever you're going to share, in everything you're going to, you are going to demonstrate fairness, uh, which is very important. Fidelity, uh, which means uh, when you make any promises, uh, make sure that it's honest and uh, and, uh, but fidelity also means is don't make any promises to any client. So the whole purpose of counseling is not you to make decision. It is you to facilitate for the client to make the right decision. So you are creating an environment, uh, you are giving the client an option, but at the end of the day, the client must make the final decision what the client wants to do. So it's very important when you look into this that you need to understand that the client is number one and does play an important role. So the client needs to have the priority as much as possible. So that's what I'm expecting. So when you are going to discuss it in your assignment, uh, you are going to apply this principle in a counseling session and you need to come up then with reasons why, uh, how, and then come up with the advantage uh, and so on. So 
The second assignment is looking at the national guidelines of HIV AIDS and especially for young people living with HIV AIDS. Now, I will encourage you that, uh, that you need to consult the latest Sentinel survey. Uh, you have to look at, at the latest prevalences of, of HIV people living with HIV AIDS in Namibia. Uh, and I will also encourage you that you need to get the latest statistics in order to explain and discuss on your, your, your assignment. Now, the purpose of this assignment is you just want to see uh, uh, the interventions that have been taken. Uh, does it make any differences to young people? Now, if you look, for example, at this map of Africa, now this one is looking at uh, a woman, a pregnant woman that are living with HIV AIDS. And, and this is just what they call a projection for the future. Now, if you look at those statistics, you will see that, um, for example, uh, a woman that are living with HIV AIDS, a woman that are using antiretroviral drug uh, 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 to prevent mother-to-child transmission. So if you look at those stat statistics, it actually gives you a, 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 a view to see that, that in Southern Africa, Central Africa, East, West, and the rest rest of Africa that there are people living with HIV AIDS and this only gives you a, a reason why. Now, when we look at the guidelines, uh, this is just a guidelines that can help you to understand uh, uh, young people that are living with a disease. Now, uh, not guidelines number one, it's, 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 uh, it says it's a very complex issue because you have this adolescence that's very confused. Uh, some of them, they are indisciplined. Um, uh, if they live with uh, the virus, so the, the, the assumption is that they are also using ARV. So those that are using ARV, uh, which is a lifelong commitment, uh, the question that one asks is how committed are they? What happens when they create, uh, when they default and they create drug resistance? Uh, so these are some of the issues that one has to look at. For those that are living with a disease but do not know that they are having the disease, uh, how are you going to approach those young people? So there are certain ways, uh, strategies that you have to look and to apply to make sure when you reach out to young people that they do understand because it's a very complex, complex uh, situation and it needs to be addressed as much as possible. The other thing is uh, uh, the positive living, people that are living with a disease. Um, you know, when it comes to positive living is there are certain things that you have to look at. The first one is you have to accept your status. Once you've accepted your status and you go through the different, you know, before the acceptance status, you go through the reality, the denial stage, and then up until you come to the acceptance. So it's very important when you go through those stages that you have to understand as much as possible. Then, of course, after you accept your status, then you have to disclose to somebody that you trust. If you are a young people, your parents, a family member, a guardian, a close friend, somebody that you can know that will keep it confidential. And then, of course, is then the other aspect of positive living is uh, transmission to others, you know. Make sure that you will not infect or engage in a risky behavior where you will infect others. Then the issue of nutrition. So the assumption is that you are now HIV positive, so you need to eat healthy. Uh, if you become an ARV, you have to look at it. Then also the plan for the future. What if you want to have children? Um, for the future, you know, all of these things that you have to look at and then also your treatment and ad adherence and then of course which is very important uh, to have a healthy lifestyle as much as possible. Then the other guideline for, for young people is also is to, to look at the, the uh, how, uh, how the, are they going to to, to, to have a healthy lifestyle. And when I talk about a healthy lifestyle, I'm talking about lifestyle of uh, cleanliness, um, uh, hygiene, uh, proper sanitation. So if you uh, uh, know that uh, you, know, you are having 
uh, you know, you are in a situation where you having certain discharge of diseases or certain discharge your body discharge certain things that you always need to make sure you are clean. Uh, you need to have, uh, and when you go to the toilet where you use sanitation, make sure uh, that you use proper sanitation. So these are some of the things uh, that you have to bring out in your assignment and you have to explain in detail specifically. And as I say, go make reference to the latest statistics um, uh, which can actually give you a guideline. So then assignment number three is looking at culture. Um, Culture, it's a very interesting thing. Now, in the slide, you will see that uh, I'm giving a, a, a just a brief a definition on what culture is. Uh, the first thing, it's it's all about social uh, uh, human that are interacting and being social. Um, it means it's a group of people uh, living in a certain uh, country or region, and then they. Uh, apply certain norms and practices. So in your assignment, uh, it is expected from you to know and to give a clear explanation in the context of Namibia what culture is and why culture is very, very important. And then you bring in the linkages of human development. Now, we as human beings, uh, uh, from the time that we are born, you know, the time of birth, uh, we, are in, we, we, we are actually exposed to as an environment which we call a social environment. The first person that you will uh, be exposed to is your mother, then the second is your father, and so it goes on. And as you grow up, you meet family, you meet friends, and, and by the time you become an adult, adult uh, or, or, or a man or a woman, um, then you have had so many interactions with different people. Uh, you are exposed to different social environments. So, and those environments can also be different cultural environments. And, and, and those env cultural environments actually uh, made you rediscover or discover you as a human being. And, and that actually makes that you also start to uh, develop. In um, physical environment where you've been brought up, uh, if you've been brought up in a very poor environment, when you grow up, you know, you form a certain behavior and the environment actually shape who you are. It shape your cultural perspective or perception. So it's very important that when you look at, at culture, you have to look in the light of development and how you as a human can de develop. Uh, society where you are as a society um, and, and people think that culture is only linked to a different, a specific ethnic group, which is true, but in a, a whole, in, in a world uh, where we find ourselves that we are linked and as we all know that the world has become a global village. So now you find that we have so many subcultures within this global village. Um, you have some cultures which we call the social network culture, people that are on Facebooking, people that are on Twitter, you know, it's a culture, it becomes a culture by itself. Uh, people that are on cell phones, you know, all what they do the whole day, they're on cell phone chatting to each other, it becomes a cultural group. So society, at the end of the day, defined what culture is, defined who we are. And, and that can actually brought certain changes to us as a human being and also as a person. So it's very important that you have to know that, that it's not just ethnic, ethnicity that shape culture, but it's also that human interaction. Um, the more individual interact with each other uh, and the more relation we have with other human beings, it actually exposes us to the different perception that those people are having. And those acceptance of those perception uh, can actually uh, make us who we are uh, because it can shape our human development. So it's very important that in your assignment when you are going to discuss that uh, you have to look at those different challenges. Also discuss what are the challenges of culture, what are the challenges we are having in Namibia. 
and how and then come up with your recommendation how can you use different culture to ensure that there is human development so it's important that when you bring out those things that you have to discover it in detail you have to explain as much as possible so that people can have a better understanding of who they are what they are and 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 to understand what is expected from them so it's very important that you have to look into it um, for your assignment and of course make sure that when you are going to discuss this, uh, you have to give practical example. Give practical example as much as possible uh, to actually justify your answer. Um, so when I or whoever is going to, to read your assignment will know that you have an understanding. And um, if you want to think out of the box, as we say, you can also compare Namibia with other southern countries, so the Southern African countries, so Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Angola, where you look at the, the culture and, and uh, how uh, the culture is either a threat to human development or it is an asset or an advantage to human relation, uh, human development. And this is where you have to look at. And remember what I said earlier, that the world has become a global village and, uh, and you, you have to see how you can have this cross-cultural communication or this cross-cultural interaction, whether it's within Namibia or without Namibia, outside Namibia, so that at the end of the day, you will ensure that there will be human development. All right, so that's with regard to the third assignment. And uh, furthermore, if you are going to look in your assignment uh, on this different culture, you have to look at this uh, certain reality. The first thing is um, that universal, universally uh, there are so different uh, 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 dynamics when it comes to culture and you have to look at those different dynamics and, and how because some cultures are growing, some cultures are diminishing. So you have to look and compare those. Circumstances where those cultures are all, you know, looking at the different ages, the, the, uh, the ages within those cultures. The issues of uh, cross-cultural communication, um, um, intimacy between two different cultures, people from different cultural groups that are meeting each other or that are dating or that are in a relationship. So this is something you have to look at. And then also how culture can be part of that human life. So this is something that you have to look at. So we are going to look at the fourth assignment, which is the last assignment. And uh, we're going to look at the psychology of sex. Now, psychology of sex, uh, now when you deal, now according to this uh, your assignment, what is expected from you is you have to look at the different sexual practices in different culture, in different taboo. So you make a choice of any two culture in a country. Then you're going to discuss is what are their beliefs? What are their practices? Is there any taboos? So these are the aspects that you're going to look at. Now, the question that you can ask yourself is, when you look at the psychology of sex within this cultural group is, what influences our attitude or our beliefs about sex and sexuality? Because there is a difference between sex and sexuality. So, and in your assignment, you have to explain what sex is, you have to explain what sexuality is. And then you have to bring out those dynamics. You have to, to give us practical example. Now, if we, there is an influence, our attitude and belief are being influenced, then we have to look at this different factors that influence our beliefs or our attitude. You are looking at your cultural values. You are looking at your personal belief. Your lack of understanding, because most of our attitude and belief on sex and sexuality is actually based on our ignorance. Many people are ignorant. They don't know. And because of their ignorance, they create their own belief and they have a certain attitude. The other thing is uh, knowledge, uh, training. Uh, many of our communities are not trained, they don't understand. So that's why training in sex and sexuality is very important. And that's the reason why you're doing this course. That's the reason why you're studying psychology. It's because you want to understand and get knowledge in order to help and create awareness and help others. 
The second aspect of the psychology of sex is you have to understand uh, what is sex, what is intimacy. So in your um, assignment, when you're going to talk about sex, you're going to talk about the different uh, levels of intimacy. What is involved when it comes to sex? Uh, uh, you talk about intimacy, you talk about feelings, different activities, the, the longing, the emotions, the affections. Uh, so there are so many aspects that you have to explain uh, when it comes to this assignment. And if you're going to explain in detail, you have to give uh, an example. So remember, as I said earlier, there is a difference between sex and sexuality. So when we talk about sexuality, what do we mean? Sexuality in a different culture. Uh, why do certain culture believe certain things? And then, of course, is why sex is a taboo. Uh, because some people think that certain practices or certain belief is a taboo. You don't talk about it. It's, it's, it's non-belief. So this uh, aspect of taboo, you have to bring it out as much as possible in your in your assignment. Now, I want to share with you a quote by a very famous cultural anthropologist. Uh, his name is Ernest Becker. Now, I will quote, uh, as he says that sex is such a problem because it reminds humans of their basic core animal nature. So what he's actually saying is that we all humans are actually animals. We've got this animal nature in us. And because of our uh, human animalistic uh, 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 instinct, uh, we actually act in certain behavior. And just because we act in certain behavior, which is different to others, uh, we come up with the idea where we call that certain behaviors are normal or certain behaviors are abnormal. So in itself, it becomes a problem. And, and it creates that conflict between human beings just because of our perception. And what Ernest Becker was saying is it, uh, uh, that, that, that every time when we look at sex or we look at our sexuality, we have to remind ourselves uh, that we are, uh, uh, that's part of our basic nature of who we are, and that actually makes us as human beings. So thank you very much, and I hope uh, that this uh, has helped you, and, uh, and I wish you all the best uh, with your assignment. Thank you. Bye.